I mean. Well, he almost broke down and he almost broke down and cried when he talked about my boy. He told me that one of the men in the camp had died at the funeral when they when they were covering up the body. Joe stood there at the graveside and said, my brother dies that I may live. May I be worthy of his sacrifice. Yes, that's, uh, that's a very fine sentiment, sir. Well, I, I don't mean to talk about my son. The only point I was making is we can't keep these innocent men sweating it out. It isn't fair to them. So let's get this over with fast and let them pick up their lives again. That's all I'm asking. I'll try, sir. Good. I knew you would. But I still have to be thorough. Thorough? I think you better get Cargill's file and come to my office immediately. Hey, sir, Get Cargill I just saw in the here before Miller shows up. I don't want those two meeting yet. Sir, what about the Look, general? Baker, He's got just a... this once. Let me handle it, will you? Okay, sir. What's going on here? Huh? General is burning his tail, huh? Hello, reception, Scotty. Scotty, you got a major cargo down there? Yeah. Send him up, will you? Right. What's happening? Okay. All right. Don't tell me. You know, I don't have to be a genius to figure this one out. He's bucking a general. He's sticking his neck out for a traitor. Won't even defend himself. Won't even tell him the truth, right? Right. I tell you, I've been in this man's army a long time. And what? Well, excuse me, sir. See, sir, the uh, colonel asked if you wouldn't like to wait in his office, sir. Baker. Hey, stay out of this. Major. Sit down, sir. Make yourself comfortable. Like a cigarette, sir? Baker, would you file these for me, please? Oh, come on. Outside later, huh? Let all right, all right, have it your way. Sir, we have what is commonly known as a situation around here. Matter of fact, the uh, colonel's down in the general's office right this minute. And he's in the act of what's described in military language as getting... He's being chewed out, as they say, sir, severely chewed out. Now, this doesn't seem to bother you at all, does it? Baker, please. Now, half the army knows the general's blowing his top. Why shouldn't he? I beg your pardon, sir. Sure you don't want a cigarette? No, thank you. Pink size? No, Filter no, top? no, thank you. Well, you can't catch anything from these things, Major. It's got 100% purified cellulose. It's got activated charcoal, radioactive M3. I mean, you positively couldn't catch a thing from these. After all, sir, I wouldn't want to see you get cancer of the lungs. It's very kind of you to be so solicitous. Oh, sir, this is... Uh... 
This is the most solicitous branch in the army. You know what we do around here, sir? We worry, don't we? Even about traitors. Take the colonel, for example. He worries about you. He's knocking himself out in your case, and I mean out. So you know what I was thinking, sir? Well, you're obviously a very deep thinker, Sergeant. I wouldn't even try to guess. I was thinking, sir, that you could show your appreciation for what the colonel's doing for you by talking. You know, just start to tell him the truth. Of course, if you don't feel like doing that, sir, I got another suggestion for you. What would you suggest? Well, I'm very glad you asked me, because I'll tell you. I'll tell you why I wouldn't want you to get cancer of the lung, sir. It just takes too long. Baker! Leave him alone, Corporal. Thank you, sir. Now, if you'd like my suggestion, get a heart attack. Get run over. Get lost. Get something. That's what you can do, sir. Baker, that's insubordination. Oh, is it? You know what happens to colonels who buck generals? You let the general give him one bad efficiency rate, and he's stuck at colonel for the rest of his time. Well, if that's the worst thing that can happen... Oh, but it isn't. Comes a time when he's forced to retire. So? Well, now, that might be all right with you, but it wouldn't be all right with him. I'm going to explain something to you, Miss Fibetta Capper. When one is retired by the Army, one does not put an ad in the New York Times saying, U.S. Army man with top experience wants a job in another Army. There's only one Army in this country. It's a monopoly. It might be illegal, but it's true. So for an ex-Army man, there's no other place to go. Now, the Army needs guys like the Colonel because he's fair, he listens, and he'll give a guy a break. So for the Army's sake, I wouldn't want to see him get fouled up, and especially not because of anybody like you. You got it, sir? You know, he's right about one thing. If you talked, you'd make it easier for the colonel. Look, all he's asking you to do is tell the truth so he can make a fair recommendation. Truth? Well, it can only help you. Why has everybody put such store on the truth? Why is truth considered to be so bright and shining and wonderful? Truth can be rotten and destructive and more vicious than any lie. Because a lie might die one day, but the truth never dies. So don't urge the truth on me. I've seen it. The filth, the torture, the misery. What one man can do to another. There's your truth. But if it could save you, or if it could help you in some you, way... You take a piece of granite and put it under pressure until the heat that's created will turn that stone to liquid. Did you know that? Granite. They call that a scientific phenomenon. Well, there's another phenomenon. It has to do with something much less durable than granite. It has to do with the mind of man. Now, you put that under enough pressure and it turns to water. When that happens, they don't call that a scientific phenomenon. They just say he's a coward, no good, rotten. They never understand. Well, the Colonel wants to understand. He wants to know what kind of pressure was put on you. Look, you can talk to him. Why don't you defend yourself? Why don't you care anymore? It isn't any one thing that makes a man not care anymore. It isn't that simple. Well, nobody's asking for any simple answers. But there aren't any answers. Just let it go at that. Sit down, Cargo. If I remember correctly, you smoke, don't you, Major? No, thank you. I want to apologize for yesterday. I mean, about running that tape recording so long. I didn't realize you were so sensitive about it. I only hope you've recovered sufficiently so that today you can answer some questions. I don't know any more today than I did yesterday. And perhaps today you'll tell me a little more of what you do know. Look, I told you yesterday I'm guilty. Now, I don't see any point in going over the same ground again. Oh, no, we're not going over the same ground, Major. I'd like to touch on some things that we didn't even mention yesterday. Like a certain sequence of events which becomes very striking. Sequence a of definite events. pattern of life in that prison camp. Brainwashing, starvation, sickness, death. For nine months, yet no man broke. And there was a period of three months when nobody died. And then suddenly, very suddenly, as a matter of fact, in a 48-hour period, Lieutenant Harvey died, Captain Connors died, and you broke. That's right. 
Was there any connection between the deaths of Harvey and Connors and your breaking? None. Your breaking followed their deaths so closely, I think there must be a connection. I'm telling you there wasn't. All right. I accept it. Incidentally, how did Harvey die? I don't remember. You don't remember? And can't remember everything. No, of course not. Major, at whose burial did you say, my brother dies that I may live? May I be worthy of his sacrifice? <laughs> they told you that, did they? There can't be any harm in admitting you said it, can there? I said it. Why? If you were to give some reason as to why you broke, what would that reason be? I suppose that some men are weaker than others. You mean then that you were the weakest man in your shack? Evidently. You signed confessions, you made broadcasts, you gave lectures, all because you were weak. A man wants to stay alive. And in your desire to stay alive, you didn't think of the effect of what you did. Effect? It didn't trouble you that probably 200 million Asiatics were hanging in the balance. That your words were weapons against everything you ever believed in. That didn't matter. No, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that you might be endangering the lives of millions of your own countrymen. Because that's what it'll cost if Asia falls to the enemy. That didn't matter. I told you before how many times I have to tell you it didn't matter. Well, tell me again, Major Harry Cargill, specialist on germ warfare. Shut up! What's the matter, Major? Don't you like the sound of it? Do you know what I think? I think you were frightened by that recording yesterday because it haunts you. I think you're haunted by the ghosts of dead minds as well as dead bodies. Minds that you helped to kill by your broadcasts. Minds that were pushed over the brink by you. Isn't that right, Major? I told you to shut up. Answer me, isn't that right? I don't have to answer, answer you. me. What kind of an inquisition is this? You'd like it to be an inquisition, wouldn't you? But it's not going to be. You're going to be defended whether you like it or not. Because we've got a standard of justice we'll follow in spite of you. Standard of justice? You poor fool, that's ancient history, Colonel. You're out of style, you and your standards. You're obsolete. It's a new kind of world. Kill, destroy, dog eat dog. And maybe that's the way it ought to be because I don't think mankind deserves any better. You really believe that? Yes, I believe that. Who kills one man kills the whole world. How many worlds have I killed? Where did you hear that? Your wife. Your wife? You leave her out I'll of I'll get it. my I... information any way I can, Cardinal. Now get in. You have no right. I don't care what you do to I me. I think that's an order. Good. Miller here yet? Yes, sir. All right, get him in. Sir, here are the carbons from Miller's testimony. Okay, thanks. Get Baker, too. Yes, sir. much we have to cover today. I was just going over your testimony last night. I'd like to clear up a few minor points. Well, I'll do anything I can to help, sir. That's fine. I knew you would. Now, first, when Cargill said, this man means business now, what was he referring to? Cargill said that? That's what you told me yesterday. No, sir. I don't think I oh, said yes. that. Oh, yes. Yes, you did, Lieutenant. You said, uh, Said Cargo said, I mean, well, he almost broke down and he almost broke down and cried when he talked about my boy. He told me that one of the men in the camp had died at the funeral when they when they were covering up the body. Joe stood there at the graveside and said, My brother dies that I may live. May I be worthy of his sacrifice. Yes, that's, uh, that's a very fine sentiment, sir. Well, I, I don't mean to talk about my son. The only point I was making is we can't keep these innocent men sweating it out. It isn't fair to them. So let's get this over with fast and let them pick up their lives again. That's all I'm asking. I'll try, sir. Good. I knew you would. 
But I still have to be thorough. Thorough? I think you better get Cargill's file and come to my office immediately. Sir, Get Cargill in here before Miller shows up. I don't want those two meeting yet. Sir, what about the Look, general? Baker, He's got just a... this once. Let